home is one of the most important decisions you'll make in your entire life. Call the Holly Ritchie team today for a free market analysis. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Spanning the Needs, Stories for Your Lifestyle. Tonight, I'm joined with a good friend of mine. I've known him for years, Zach Humphreys. He's my crypto man. We're going to talk about how cryptocurrency is evolving, how it works, and what we need to know. I think that's what people really want with this really exploding. Zach, glad to have you on the show. Yeah, Anthony, so uh, so happy to be here, man. It's been a while, and I'm um, actually back in Youngstown, too, back in the hometown, so happy to be back in Y-Town. And uh, yeah, man, um, I'm still relatively relatively new to crypto, but I've got a couple years in, man. And I'll tell you what, dude, it's changing every single day and uh, so much to learn all the time. Just when you think you you know, you know got you have some things figured out, uh, there's some other things to learn. So uh, happy to talk about you know what, what I've learned so far. And um, yeah, man, hopefully it helps other people too. Well, I think that's big right now because what what we have been acknowledging as, okay, digital currency, We've looked at a variety of things from Venmo to Zillow to all that moving back and forth. Now comes on the scene. I think it's what, about 15 years old, but really hasn't taken shape until probably the last five years. Yeah, it's a great way, uh, great place to start too, uh, Anthony. And, and it's really, you know, we've been using blockchain technology uh, for a long time. And you actually just mentioned some of those payment avenues that we already have, right? So uh, we've all used probably Venmo or Cash App or PayPal uh, that's blockchain technology. Uh, there, there's a reason why those payments are being able to happen so quickly and, and pretty much instantly, right? Instantaneously. Now, what, what if I was able to pay you in that same way and didn't have to wait for a, a wire transfer to go through for 48 hours, right? That's really where we're heading, I think, in terms of you know the banking system, in terms of how we move run, uh, money around from business to business. You know, the more interconnected we become uh, globally, which is happening at a rapid rate because of the Internet and, uh, you know, global business, uh, the more we're going to need this technology. Right now, uh, the United States and many other countries are talking about how to regulate crypto because right. one of the things that, you know, people uh, push back on is that, you know, it's only used for malicious activities. It, it, you know, crypto is only used for bad actors. And of course, there are always bad actors, right, especially in new technology. However, it's not uh, it, it's not it shouldn't be the focus. And, and I don't think it's the majority, uh, but it's the narrative you hear and see uh, in the media right now because it's probably so new. But uh, well, I believe that's where we're heading, man. And I think, you know, I think being at the forefront forefront of it from a business perspective, from an investing perspective, it can certainly help uh, a lot of people in my in my opinion. Let's start. Let's start from the beginning, because, as you know, cryptocurrency is now coming to the forefront on all news in the last, just probably, I'm going to be very honest, in the last couple of years. And now it's becoming more with this war we have going on, which is a horrible thing going on over in um, the Russian Terrible. Ukraine. And, and they talk about cryptocurrency. And, and then with the pandemic, they were talking about because of the pandemic and a variety of other things. How did kind of crypto talk a little bit of how it started and then kind of like where we are now? Because I don't, I don't know much about it. So this is a great lesson for me to learn what crypto really is. Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, it started back in 2010. Of course, the household name is Bitcoin, right? That's the one that everybody kind of knows, at least has heard of, right? And uh, it started and still is kind of super underground still. It hasn't really gone super mainstream yet. But what's happening now are what's called altcoins. And these altcoins are serving specific purposes. And the number one altcoin right now is Ethereum. So how I look at Bitcoin, in my opinion, I think Bitcoin is going to be eventually a store of value, uh, similar to what gold has been for a long time. So when we look at gold, it has about a $10 trillion market cap. Uh, Bitcoin has been a little bit up uh, over $1 trillion at its peak, uh, which was uh, later uh, er earlier last year. Uh, but eventually, I think as Bitcoin grows, which I do think it will grow 10x from here, by the way, uh, not financial it's, it's advice. It's interesting. It's interesting. Not, not financial advice, but I do think it will happen. It's not a financial uh, advisor disclaimer. I've got to say that all the time on my YouTube channel. So, so but um, yeah, man, I think as it gets closer to gold's market cap, 
uh, which I'm not the only person who thinks this, by the way. A lot, a lot of smarter people than I than I am think this as well. I think we'll start looking at Bitcoin a lot more seriously, and I think that is when a lot of the institutions will start to put uh, money into it, uh, which they already are starting to do, by the way. And I think a lot more of people who are you know invested in traditional finance will start to look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrency a lot closer. So I think Bitcoin eventually will be the store of value. So, you know, I, I encourage you to, to talk to some people. So I'm 32, right? If you talk to earlier investors or, or younger investors, rather, uh, in their 20s, ask them how they're investing. And I think what you'll find is a lot of people are going right to crypto, uh, people in their 20s. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because uh, that's what they see first. That's what they hear first. And I think, uh, as with all new technologies, the people who grow up in it tend to be a lot uh, more versed in it early on. And I think you're starting to see that uh, kind of transpire. But um, the history, I could go on and on, man. But where we are now, we saw huge, huge growth in 2020. And there are a few reasons for that. Uh, number one was uh, what, what the feds did with, with interest rates. Uh, they kept printing money, right? So what that enabled uh, people to do is to spend more money, right? Uh, whether they had it or not, uh, they, they it, artificially they did, right? Uh, a lot of people took their stimulus checks and invested in it and, and made and made those you know twelve hundred dollar stimulus checks or, or whatever that number was into a lot more money because Bitcoin and and other cryptocurrencies and altcoins exploded in two thousand twenty. I think the other big factor was people just had more time. They had more time on their hands. They were at home. They were on the internet more. We saw uh, Netflix stock skyrocket. A lot of the tech stocks did really, really well. A lot of those stay-at-home plays is what they were called, you know, on CNBC and and, and networks like that. And uh, I think it really benefited crypto. Uh, now we're two years removed from that, and we're kind of going through these growing pains again because of all the geopolitical things happening. You mentioned the the war going on in Ukraine, which is super unfortunate of course yeah. and uh, you know we pray for everybody who's who's kind of going through that it's terrible uh but um because of all these macroeconomic factors geopolitical factors we're kind of at a stalemate right now and it's not just crypto uh it's the stock market too but um you know the the, the tides will turn again and i think when they do uh, in my opinion we're going to see even a bigger rush into cryptocurrency than we did in 2020 and 2021 well and i think i kind of, like i'm i'm kind of the the new guy on the on the block when it comes to crypto. So a lot of these questions are just a beginner, like trying to figure out, is it a good investment for me or or is it something that yeah. I, I shouldn't invest in? And I think that's the one thing that I look at is like, what is it? Like, is it that me just that like, is it exchanging um, a variety of different things or what does that look like in the, like if I'm a, a just a first timer, like, what do I do? Like, because I, I, I'm starting to see, I just saw an advertising that crypto is sponsoring the Oscars. Yeah, and, man. And, and I just saw uh, crypto was buying a forum or, or the naming rights for one in, I think it was uh, LA. Yeah, the Staples Center is now crypto.com arena. Uh, so crypto.com is actually a what's called a centralized exchange. And a centralized exchange is, uh, you know, you have Coinbase, crypto.com, where it's centralized, meaning that it's you know backed by uh, a, a governing body. Now there are also decentralized exchanges, which I don't want to go too deep in the weeds, but we'll, we'll stick to centralized exchanges first. So the Coinbase's of the world, Crypto.com's, these are huge, huge companies. Coinbase is a publicly traded company now, where you can get upwards to I think like four or five hundred different coins now uh, on their platform. But I would encourage people, you know, spend some time to really dig into the research. Of course, you know, I have a channel, but I'm only one person. I mean, there are so many places to get right. good information. Uh, I spent upwards to a year just kind of learning about the ins and outs of, of crypto and how it could be used. But, you know, you look at El Salvador, you know, Bitcoin I see as a store of value, but it also could be transactional. So El Salvador has already made Bitcoin its legal tender. Uh, alongside the U.S. dollar. So that means in El Salvador, you can pay for anything uh, in U.S. dollar or Bitcoin. Uh, and just today, Honduras uh, has, was supposed to say today, I actually haven't seen the, the news press, uh, the, the, the press release actually, but Honduras is rumored to be getting very close to doing so too. And there's a reason why you're seeing countries with low GDP do this, because it's a much fairer system. And their financial system is so broken as, as it's currently constructed where Bitcoin kind of gives them a restart, uh, an opportunity to kind of do it again. And um, so what one thing El Salvador did was they 
they funded every single per, uh, citizen's um, account with an X amount of Bitcoin. I think it was equivalent to like $25 or $30. Now, they can choose to then accumulate, but as they accumulate and Bitcoin goes up, right? It's not like putting your money in a bank account right. and it's just stagnant and essentially really losing value due to inflation. Uh, Bitcoin can actually go up in value. Of course, it can go down too, and it's highly volatile. So uh, understanding that and, and being wary of that is also important. Well, and, and I think that's a great question is, is what what is it monitored by? So if I'm buying crypto at whatever price that is, I buy... Uh, give me an example of like, if I wanted to buy a thousand dollars worth of crypto, what does that get me? Because I hear all these, oh, there's like a crypto guy that's got $10 billion that he paid a hundred thousand 15 years ago on Bitcoin. And it's worth like 2 billion yeah. and, and he can't find the password. So oh, talk yeah. about like, if I purchase something, what does that look like? Cause we want to keep it very simple. Cause that look who you're talking to when it comes to crypto, I'm used to yeah. the old system. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the simple way, and this is the way, and again, uh, you know, definitely do some homework here. I, I don't want to come off as a financial advisor because I'm not that. I'm just a talking head on YouTube who's who's still learning. But um, so the, the easy way is to go through a centralized exchange. Uh, so Coinbase here in the United States has the best reputation. Uh, it has been around the longest as well. Uh, it is an exchange that I personally use. And there's some really cool things you could do with with Coinbase and just kind of passively invest into, let's say, Bitcoin, for example, because that's the household name. Uh, it's ranked number one out of, by the way, 18,000 plus different cryptocurrencies now. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty nuts. But Bitcoin, let's just say I wanted to passively invest on every 15th of the month. Right. I want to take uh, $200 from my paycheck and put it in there. And it's a long term investment for me. It's something that, you know, I'm going to add on to my 401k when I retire, right? And every single 15th of every month, I'm going to passively invest. You could set that up on Coinbase and it will automatically draw from an existing bank account that you link it with and it'll take out $200. And what that strategy is called is dollar cost averaging. So essentially you're not monitoring the price of Bitcoin to time the market, right? Uh, a lot of people will say it's really hard to time the market, but time in the market will make you money, right? So if, if you just have, if you spend time in the market, and you don't want to be an active investor and really try to uh, buy the dip, as they say, and you have to watch it every single day and, and kind of know exactly. I hate those days. I hate those in. days. Right. The red days. Right. Um, but they're great buying days. That's their whole reverse psychology. Right. Buy in the red sell, uh, buy low, sell high. But um, the dollar cost averaging strategy is something that I've utilized uh, before, especially when I first started, when I wasn't as active, but I knew I wanted to get started. Um, and you could set it up for like weekly, you could set it up monthly, you could set it up uh, daily, even on Coinbase, where it's like, hey, I want to just throw $5 a day uh, into Bitcoin every single day. And then no matter what that price is doing, as it's going up, as it's going down, you're getting you're getting that $5 at, at high prices and low prices as well. And uh, this is a strategy that's, you know, directly, you know, uh, taken from the traditional uh, stock market side of things too. people dollar cost average into indices like, you know, the S&P 500 um, right. all the time. Well, it, let me ask you this is, is it's the notion that does that Bitcoin or crypto match up kind of with what the market does or is it kind of its own market? It's a great question. So the overall market, uh, Bitcoin makes up about 60% of it. Uh, give or take right now, the overall market is roughly about $2 trillion. And again, Bitcoin makes up a, a large chunk of that, 60%. Now you take that into context, and this is why I say we're so early still in cryptocurrency. It's because the entire crypto market is not even as high as the, the, the market cap of Apple which is uh, you know, the highest market cap on the stock market, but it's just one company. But that's how big Apple is and how early, I believe, crypto is. So you know, the fact that you know, regulation, the conversation is being had right now, that tells me that the US government and other governments around the world know that this thing's here to stay, right? Because they wouldn't be doing anything with it if they thought it was just a fad. Now, maybe five years ago, yeah, they thought it was a fad. It'll phase out, right? But now here today, they're, they're talking about crypto regulation and you've got to check a box on the IRS form if you're in crypto. That tells me that this thing's not going away. The government believes that, too. But we want to make sure that people are safe. And there are, you know, uh, measures that need to be taken in, in that respect. One hundred percent in DeFi, you've got to be very, very careful. And that's why I said to keep it simple, stick with the centralized exchanges, the Coinbase's, the Crypto.com's. 
Uh, and, you know, they have been maliciously attacked in the past, but they have uh, the liquidity to pay the, those uh, the, the investor back if something were to happen. And it's super rare that it does. Um, well, let me let me let me kind of go through this part. So you, you look at this whole crypto thing and there are so many theories out there about why the government's regulating them. I get regulation, but then you kind of think, well, the government just wants its ki- wants its take like taxes and like it does on the stock market. Sure. Or you could go a little bit of religious way too. Um, so, but I'm not going down that road. Um, but what are some of the pros and cons to investing and not investing in crypto? Because I think the question would be is, does the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to putting money if you have that available? Well, I think you just hit on the first point. Uh, you know, something that I always talk about is only invest what you're willing to lose, and I think that goes for all sorts of investments. Uh, you know, it, it should be it should be excess money that you don't need to pay your house off, that you don't need to pay your car off or your credit card or your bills. After all of those sort of things are taken care of, right? If there's excess money and you decide to put it into Bitcoin rather than buy that nice shiny pair of shoes. Okay, I think I think that's that's fair. Now, uh, in terms of you know, is it safe? Uh, I believe it is. Yes, and I think you know the safest investment you can make in crypto, in my opinion, is Bitcoin. Uh, I just think the network effects that it's that it's seen in the last you know twelve plus years have been absolutely amazing. You know, I'm getting ready to go to uh, Bitcoin Miami, and um, there will be you know a ton of speakers talking about you know, where they believe this industry is going. And you're seeing in the United States alone, they're putting in uh, Bitcoin ATMs. So yeah, I think so we're, I saw some of that. There was one, I think they just put one in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're going up all over. And I think what we're doing, man, I think we're gearing up toward that shift. And I think, you know, a lot of these merchants are not to the point where they want to accept Bitcoin per se or Ethereum per se. But think about this, Anthony, and, and everybody out there listening. How often do you actually pay with cash? Versus 10, 15 years ago. Well, I, I'll say this is every time back in college, let's just keep it at that. Yep. I used to go to the bar or I'd go out to eat bar restaurant with friends, have like 40 bucks in my pocket. When I get home, I got five bucks and, I'm, <laughs> and, and, and all I got was dinner, which was like 15 bucks. I lost money out of my pockets. Don't know how, don't know anything like that. That's so I moved to the debit card. And that's how I did it because my wife will tell you this. I just, my pockets are just <laughs> not deep enough and I don't carry a purse like a girl. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's the point, right? It's, it's, we're already kind of living in this digital society, right? And, and we're paying with things primarily digitally. I mean, how many people use Amazon, right? I think about everybody and, and we, and we pay with our credit card. It's electronic. Uh, it, it's not a physical thing that's transacted with, right? So when we go up to the grocery store nowadays and tap our phone to pay yeah. with Apple pay, uh, I think the future of that is, well, we're going to tap our phone, be able to pay with Bitcoin or Ethereum or insert crypto here that you've accumulated over the years. Well, and, and, and I agree with that. It's, let me ask you, how secure I know we talked just quickly that it's a good thing, but how secure is it? Because we, we run into issues that um, anywhere, credit cards get expired, bank accounts get zero. How secure is the the Bitcoin crypto that, hey, I'm going to go up and I'm going to tap my phone and it, it basically like the credit card or the Apple Pay? I think we'll get those sort of uh, the, the, those sort of questions answered, especially when it's like on our phone and so easy to use. Once there's some type of regulation, once it's backed, uh, you know. But right now there are ways to secure your crypto. Uh, there's something called a hard wallet. Uh, the the best one out there, in my opinion, is the Nano X Ledger. And basically, what this does is, you know, you, you'll have your crypto on either a centralized or a decentralized app. But what the ledger will do is kind of a backup, meaning if someone were to hack into, let's say, my Coinbase account and try to get into my crypto, they wouldn't be able to without this ledger. And this ledger looks like a little USB port. It's like a physical little thing. And it's, everything is backed up on that. So a lot of people will get one of these. They'll put it in a safe, uh, whether that's a uh, you know, lockbox or just their personal safe or something like that. And again, for $150, that's a great investment, especially when a lot of people, you know, have thousands of dollars invested in cryptocurrency that they want to ensure are there and, um, you know, safe. Yeah, I, 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 I'm still, I'm, I don't know. It's something that is growing, 
But at yep. the end of the day is it's like a, a risk. When you're in the stock market, it's the same thing. Do yep. I want to put my money in aggressive, moderate? And, and I think that as crypto grows, you're going to get those amounts that are going to higher and higher like you're buying silver or gold. Does that summarize it in some fashion? I think you're hitting on some some key things, and I, I think there's uh, there's a lot to be said in terms of risk tolerance here. I mean, when we're talking about uh, investing in, let's say, the S and P 500, that's far less risky than a penny stock, right. right? And it's similar in crypto. So when we're talking about investing in Bitcoin, that's far less volatile and far less risky than investing in, let's say, Shiba Inu. Uh, and Shiba Inu is one that uh, I did personally really well with. It's it's risky. Um, but it but it had a huge huge run up over the past couple of years, and um, I got lucky on that, and and really grew my YouTube channel because of that particular coin. And um, but here's the thing, man, you have to ask yourself that: how much risk are you willing to take? And there's always risk associated with investing, but the returns in crypto, I will tell you this, are insane. So when you do win, I mean, we're talking, you know, a good return in the stock market. People love when they can get seven, eight, ten. Oh, yeah. oh God, right? I'm in heaven. Love it, right? Normal, and, and, and normal crypto, is almost between four and six. I'll give you an example. So in crypto, there was a micro uh, cap uh, play that just launched yesterday and went up 700% in an hour, <laughs> right? So those are the now. type of returns uh, that, 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 are, that are out there. But again, super, super risky. Uh, and you have to be very, very well versed in how to get in and get out at, the, uh, at, at good times. But again, I come back to maybe you're not, you know, ready for all of that, ease into that. Uh, an easy way to start investing in crypto is again, dollar cost averaging. And again, do your own homework on this, but dollar cost averaging into let's say Bitcoin and Ethereum. For me, they're my largest two holdings, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I passively invest into both of those because I see Bitcoin as the store of value in the future. I see Ethereum as the the internet money in the future. Uh, personally, that's where I think it's going. Uh, so that's my philosophy. That's my thesis. And, and that's kind of, you know, why I invest that way. Did you write that thesis in communications? <laughs> I wrote that thing. And this is a little different thesis. Thank God I'm done with that other one though, man. Oh, that was brutal. Masters, uh, but, masters are brutal. I get it. Yeah, well, man. We, we talk about crypto and, and now I'm starting to see um, as a, as a person that runs nonprofits, that seems to be the way that nonprofits are looking at opportunity to find ways of raising money. Mm -hmm. Is that something that non how, how, what do you see that oh, between nonprofits and crypto? It's huge. Uh, in fact, I'd love to talk with you a little bit off air and, and just show you some of the projects that are already doing this. So there are a plethora of charity tokens and uh, it's interesting. It's really fun because this, uh, the seat, uh, the seat I sit in every single day, I'm talking to developers of projects and they're all pitching these new ideas. And it's so fascinating to, to listen to these new ideas and, and how people want to tokenize a business because that's really what they're doing. They're tokenizing a business. And so I talked to a developer uh, just yesterday about um, cleaning up beaches all around the world. So a percentage of these transactions, when you buy into the token, a very small percentage of the fees, it's like two or 3% of the transaction fees, go into this separate wallet. And this wallet is helping fund to, cl uh, to clean up all the beaches, right? Uh, so it's very interesting, right? And then there's also incentives for this particular token. And this is really how it works in a lot of these different um, new, newer tokens. There's incentives to hold the asset. And as you hold, you earn what are called reflections. So that means on every buy and sell, every single buy and sell, the holder, somebody who's continuing to hold that asset, gets a small percentage of that back into their wallet, right? It's like cash back on credit cards, very similar. Right. Uh, but here you're able to earn cash back and also invest in a project. And really, it's a company. A lot of these, a lot of these uh, projects are registered LLCs. And you're investing in a project that, number one, is uh, giving back to something you believe in, which could be clean up beaches. And also, you're earning passive income by holding it. So, boom, there's the use case. That's something you always ask as an investor, at least myself, is what's the utility? Like, why would I want to hold this? And, and those are questions I always ask up front. And, and that's, where I, that's where my research begins before I invest in a different project. Well, it's, it's interesting you said, would you, so nonprofits are actually getting on the bandwagon of this crypto pretty much in the last, we talking the last couple of years or just now? Yeah, no, I, I think I think the last couple of years, but especially 
over the past six to eight months, I've seen a lot of different charity tokens uh, come up. There's another one I just talked to today. Uh, similarly to that first example I just gave you with the beaches, uh, they're helping out rescue. Um, uh, they're helping out uh, dog pounds, right? Okay. Which we know are super underfunded uh, in a lot of different places. And they're helping out, uh, you know, rescue, uh, rescue missions as well. Uh, so yeah, man, it's, it's, it's happening right now. And the, the charity tokens, honestly, the last even three to four months, I've been seeing them pop up even more and more and more. And it makes sense because they're going after a targeted community who already cares about that initiative. Right. right. And then, okay, well, how can we tokenize this and create a business that a, uh, helps whatever that initiative is that we're trying to help and B keeps people holding the asset. And hopefully those people are then telling others and, and bringing more people into their ecosystem. It's interesting. That's something we're going to have to look, uh, I'm going to have to look into and just look at how something like that can help a foundation. Because as you know, in the last two years, foundations have gotten hit tremendously bad yep. because of yeah. the pandemic. Sure. Yeah. And, and I'd be happy to, um, you know, talk with you off air and, and kind of put you in contact with some of the head devs of these projects. And, you know, a lot of these um, people leading up the projects, they hire on a blockchain specialist to mm -hmm. you know write their contract and, and, and do what's called their tokenomics, which are basically uh, a fancy way to say, like, how does each transaction, uh, how does a percentage of each transaction go into various wallets that help fund the project, go back into the project and then help its holders um, stay happy. Well, so you, you, we look at crypto and, and the pandemic has pretty much turned, I hate to say it's the world upside down in, in some fashion. Definitely. Um, thank God people are healthy and, and we're hopefully coming out of this. We, we hope what, what does the growth look like for the future of, of crypto? Where, where do we see it in, I don't know, five, 10 years. Do you, do you see multi governments across the world using it as a day-to-day -day thing. Where is your, what's your, what's your thought and opinion on that? I, so the global market cap of crypto is a little less than 2 trillion right now. Uh, I, I can see it three to five Xing the, the global market cap of crypto in the next three to five years. So I think now that we're having the conversations about regulation, a lot more people are going to come into the space because there is a large population of people who are waiting to feel like it's a safer environment to play in, right? And because a lot of these people have done a lot of uh, great things in the traditional stock market world, they're happy, they're, they're, they're probably decently well off, or they're happy earning their seven to 8%. Once that big money starts diversifying a little bit into crypto, look out, uh, because a lot of those big players are still on the sidelines. To give you an example, I mean, uh, right now, only 4% of the world's population is invested in cryptocurrency, 4%. Uh, so when that number, let's just even say doubles or triples, uh, that's why I always say getting in now, you are super, super early to the game. Uh, and you can see, uh, you can ask people who were in it back in 2010 and, and 2015, they've seen the exponential growth and the potential crypto has. And uh, here's the other thing too. I think you know, right now we're dealing with a lot of macroeconomic factors. Of course, we're you know dealing with supply chain issues and COVID is still out there. You know, they're, they're having lockdowns in, in China uh, still. Um, unfortunately, uh, hopefully that doesn't, you know, uh, make its way here again to the well, state. Just in Europe, they're starting in Europe. to, yeah. And, and I think the, from looking at different things is in talking with a lot of different, at least here in our area and maybe the United States is, We've had huge numbers of positive cases. And I think mm -hmm. the thing about that is, is it shows that there may, not a doctor, disclaimer, <laughs> um, there, there may be immune as just like the flu. We hope, but at the same time, right. we still need to take everything that we're doing seriously in some capacity, um, just making sure families are safe. Agreed. You know, but but the bigger the big point here, we're still dealing with those sort of things. We're dealing with this war uh, in Ukraine. So we're dealing with inflation numbers that we haven't seen in the last 40 years. Oh, uh, don't so me. That's we're CPI dealing with gas prices. Yeah, we're dealing with gas prices over four dollars. So none of the markets are doing well right now. But uh, I believe, you know, uh, right now uh, we're, we're kind of in this 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 spot. And this is my thesis. You know, right now when nobody's really talking about it or thinking about it. 
I think it's going to be one of those things, right? Everybody's had this moment where they were like, man, if I only would have invested in Netflix back then, right? Or if I only would have went into Amazon back then or Amazon back then, if I only, I had a hunch it was going to get big, but I just had, I don't know. I didn't put it in. That's where I think we're at with cryptocurrency. I think uh, anybody who's getting in now, in my opinion, not financial advice, uh, five years from now, we'll say, man, I'm, I'm lucky that I, I started, I started getting in when I did. Uh, that's just where I think it's going. I, I think um, you talk to anybody like in the ICO uh, era, right? And you look at a lot of the people who made uh, tremendous success. It, it was around a time when the internet was born, right? And there were a lot of naysayers. There were a lot of people who were like, no, I'll just keep my brick and mortar. I don't need to have a dot com. Who needs that crap, right? Those people got left behind. The people who uh, took a risk and, and were sort of visionary and saw where things were heading, they made it. And I think we're right there again, 20 years later, and this time it's crypto. Yeah, and I, I see it. And I was that guy that, oh man, I'll hold off on Amazon a little bit, or <laughs> Disney, or yep. or I just didn't have the money. And then uh, one of my friends, hey, you should get into this. And it's like the the three the three prong notion of two or three people telling you the same thing, and you're like, yep, hmm, I think I need to see that. And Something then you're like, crap, I lost out. <laughs> I was right there with you, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I look back at it all the time because I was kind of a little bit invested into Bitcoin and I, I dabbled in it, but like I didn't understand it enough to really go in. And I started doing the math one day, man, only if I would have like put what I wanted to back then or even could have, um, man. Um, but I'm here now and I don't want to make that same mistake. So in my opinion, I think we're still early in the crypto and um, I've learned a lot over the last couple of years. But as I mentioned at the top, man, I'm learning every single day. There's so much to learn and um, it's, 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 it's evolving quickly. And um, you know, I want to be at the forefront of this. What I believe is, is the next technological revolution. It's funny. We, we look at it. Why couldn't I be the smart as I am now at the age of 20 and know what I know? <laughs> I know, it. I know the, things, it. the things I could have done. I could have been a <laughs> lot. I could have been retired. I know. I know. It, it's always easy to to look back and say, man, what if, but it's a lot harder to say, I think this is where this thing's going. I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take a stance here. Right. And, and try to get out ahead of something. Uh, and I think you're right, man. I think, you know, I, I'm right there with you. I look back and uh, I, I was never a big investor. I, I didn't really understand it. Um, but now, you know, I'm 32 now. And, and these last couple of years, maybe it was just into my thirties. I, I needed to hit 30 to wake up a little bit. And, um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm super excited about where it's going and now I'm doing it full time. So I have a lot more time to learn and educate myself. Um, I was an educator in, in higher ed, uh, for a little while there. And, um, and we now all I'm were doing... in some capacity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Called and, a doctor. <laughs> exactly. And, and now I think I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm educating, but just in a different field. So, um, I love the, I love the teaching element of, of YouTube. And, um, I look at it as like, you know, instead of talking to 20 to 25 people in a room, I get to talk to uh, 20 to 25,000 people around the world. So it, it, it's pretty cool. And I'm very grateful to, uh, to have the platform. Well, it, it's funny you say that. It's like kind of like when you're back in college, it's like I, I didn't invest anything probably till I was 24, 25 years old. You beat um, me to so it, man. Until I actually took an investment course um, yep. and was like, oh, okay. And had a little bit of money and put little by little in. And, and yep. the problem is like, Stupid of me, couldn't touch it till I'm 59. Wrong fund. <laughs> Wrong fund. But you're still probably seeing the power of, of what you put in then. And it, you're you're probably still seeing it grow. And I mean, uh, that's, that's that. I want it. I want vacation. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> well, with crypto, with crypto, you you have control to get it in and out whenever you want to. That's do I have to pay a fee? So uh, it's funny, there, there are some platforms, there are fees, but for Coinbase in particular, again, probably my favorite, um, and, and a lot of people in the U.S. would say the same, that they're the number one platform in the U.S. Um, but with Coinbase, you could pay $30 a month, okay, and there are no fees. So it sounds like, oh, okay, 30 bucks a month. But, you know, if you're going to transact, let's say, four or five times in a month's period, right. you're going to spend upwards to 50 or 60 bucks in fees. So it's, it's probably worth it. Um, so that's yeah. what I do. I, I, that, I pay that, actually, that is a good point. Depending how much you're, if you're, if you're just putting in once a month, it's not worth it. Correct. If you're, if you're there for the long term, it's like, see, one of the biggest things that I always look at is long term, three, five, 10 years down the road is what happens if we have crashes, computer crashes, compu we don't have money. There ain't no money. Computers go down. Yeah. 
I have no money, no crypto, no. The only thing I'd have is cash, to be honest. Cash would be useless in, in that type of phase. I'm, yeah. Now you're looking at exchanging here. I'll exchange my computer for this. And and it's like that one thing, like I always look at, it's like what happens when technology fails us, which you have seen in the last two to five years alone, ransom attacks yeah. where systems have shut down internally and externally. It's an interesting point. You know, I always think about it this way too. Like, you know, your money in a bank is obviously secure because it's FDIC insured, right? But you want to know the point, kicker to that? You yeah. want to know the kicker to that that I found out last year? They have 99 years to pay you. <laughs> really? That's what that's what people don't know is hmm. that if you're FDIC, it they they probably pay you sooner than that, but they're right. only obligated yeah, by true. law from what I don't quote me on this, but this is what I was told. Hmm. Not trying to get misinformation. Look it up yourself. That they have 99 years to pay you back. That's interesting. That, that yeah. makes sense, too. It covers. No, it doesn't. I want my money sooner than that. Well, I mean, from their standpoint, it covers them, right? Just in case. I don't care. But I agree. Um, but here's the cool thing, though, with crypto. So everything's recorded on the blockchain. And the blockchain is actually public knowledge. So every single transaction is recorded publicly. Uh, so it's actually super secure uh the blockchain now you know where, where you hear about like it being like um you know not secure is like hackers and things like that but that happens in our financial system too right it's like credit card fraud right like all the time uh but the only thing is that you know there's not somebody to go running to when it's crypto so that's why i was talking about the ledger and things you could do to back right. it up to to personally um you know make sure you're safe the whole thing about crypto you know I know I'm kind of speaking on a tangent here, but it, it all started with a libertarian movement, actually, which is kind of interesting. You know, I don't want to go political here, but um, it did because. Interesting. Like, yeah, it, it did because because, you know, libertarians believe in like freedom and, and you know, um, so that's the whole thing around like decentralization. It's like the people have the power. Right. Uh, versus the government having the power and being like a top down hierarchical structure, whereas like crypto, there's something that's within a lot of communities called a DAO. And essentially what it is, without getting into the nitty gritty, people vote on how they want a project to move forward or how they want funds to be allocated or how they want the buy and sell pack to look like. So, yeah, a lot of these new projects, they have what's called a DAO and literally it's all a community vote. So if there's 5000 holders, all 5000 holders get to choose, OK, what do we want the buy tax to be? What do we want the sell tax it's to basically be? basically like shareholders of a corporation all but voting they, for certain yeah. things. And they have a say so in basically everything, which is really cool. Interesting. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, this is a lot of good information. I hope our viewers can kind of take a look at this and, hey, this may be something that you may or may not want to invest in. But yeah. it's always it's always the risk, just like you are in the stock market. 100%. You're, you're, I mean, that's just at the end of the day, that's how it is. 100%, man. Yeah. And uh you know, I would just encourage people to, uh, you know, start learning about it. And, uh, you know, before before you go ahead and, and make a you know big decision on something, um, take in, you know, some information for three, four months. And there's so many different ways to do that. I think sometimes we forget, man, the Internet's this big, wide place and it's all this public free knowledge, man. It's right there. You know, I think we we often go to the same places over and over. Right. We watch the same Netflix shows. It's like branch out a little bit and, and Google something a little bit new and go down That's a rabbit the problem hole with people. Yeah. Google. Doesn't mean it's correct. That's who. That's who. You're um, gonna go go to legit website. What's a le let me ask you this legit website for more information on crypto? So one of the news sources I use it's a it's a crypto news aggregator and it's really good. They compile all the um, top articles of the day. So it's called CryptoNews.net. CryptoNews.net and they've got some tabs up there like top news, but then you can look at just Bitcoin news, just Ethereum news, uh, which are the two top cryptocurrencies by market cap, and then uh, you know. I'd start there, and and there's uh there's there's, there's embedded videos I believe in some of their um uh, some of their content there too. Uh, Coin Telegraph is another one for cryptocurrency, uh, and yeah, I would start there, man. Those are two great spots. Well, that's a good start, Zach. I appreciate you coming on. It's always good to hear from you. If they want to find more information about you and your videos, and and just checking out more information on crypto, where can they find you? Yeah, man, I really appreciate you having me on. And I'll definitely, uh, anytime, man, anytime you need somebody to talk crypto, I'd be happy to come back on. Um, it's at Z Humphreys right there on my, uh, where's my name? Right there. That's my Twitter account right there. Hey, hold on, let me point Humphreys. to it. It's over here somewhere. 
Yep. At Z underscore Humphreys on Twitter. And then uh, just type my name in Zach Humphreys and I'll pop right up on YouTube. And uh, yeah, man, thanks again for having me. I appreciate it. At the end of each show. I like to have some fun for some yeah. questions. You up for a little sure. fun? Hell yeah. Okay. Jump into it. There's, I like to say there's no answer is right or wrong. It's your own prerogative. Okay. What's your best accomplishment? Best accomplishment. Uh, man. Um, Harder questions than what I asked tough. you earlier. Well, it's funny. Eight months ago, I would have said um, finishing my PhD, but um, right now here today, I would say probably growing the platform uh, in the last eight months. Okay. So, um, man, I, I would just say, you know, I don't want to go too philosophical. I, like, I feel like I never like want to have one that I'm looking back on is like my best one. Hopefully my next one's my best one all the time. You there know, you go. travel the world in crypto. That's it. That's it. That'd be, that'd be, yeah, that would be a hell of an accomplishment. Yeah. Best experience. <laughs> best experience like in life. It, it don't matter Ever. private or personal. Ever. Best experience. Um, hmm. Wow, that's tough. I would say uh, I would say traveling out of the country for the first time, just okay. getting that perspective, um, going to Europe and seeing different places and different faces and uh, seeing the world differently. Man, I think I think that definitely had an impact. If yeah, I had a pick one, I was in Ireland and Italy for my honeymoon, so I know exactly what you mean. Nice. Man. What's your best memory? Best memory. Hmm. Man, that's a good question. Yeah, you got some tough, uh, some some deep thinking uh, questions here. Uh, hey, what can I say? Best memory. Hmm. Got to have some fun with my uh, guests. Well, I got I to gotta give this one back to the hometown. Uh, going to YSU football games in the 90s with my grandfather during that era when we were winning a lot of football games. We're some still great winning football games. We still are. Yeah. But those 90s, those 90s were... I mean, they, they were, they were, they were it. <laughs> one of my, one of my bucket lists was to go to the, go to a national championship game when YSU goes. I went to uh, the most recent one when they I played in Madison. I was there. Yep. Um, down Texas. in Texas. Yeah. It was cold as heck. That, that in Saturday. Texas, it was like 30 degrees snowing. I was like, man, I thought we were going down here to get warm. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I was, uh, yeah. Me and my girlfriend, which was my wife. Now we went down there and, um, I'm like, and I have a friend that lives just right outside of Plano, Texas. Yeah. And I'm like, where's the heat? And it's like, yeah. it's like 30 degrees down here. So it was I colder there than it was in Youngstown. I felt it like. was like 50, 60 degrees. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Man. Okay. Who's your role model? Role model. Hmm. Oh man, that's tough. I would say, uh, Mark Cuban. Okay. I just think he's like the coolest billionaire out there. He just he seems so humble, so down to earth, but super successful. Very successful. I watch him on the shark. Yep. He's big into crypto too, by the way. I that was that's one name that came up to me. You can YouTube uh just that's what I like to do, man. When I was first learning, I would just Google like uh Mark Cuban beliefs on crypto and just listen to really people like that and like hear what they have to say. Like, why are they so bullish on it. Why are, you well, know he's I mean? got he's got millions of dollars that he doesn't need, and he just probably dibs them around and everything. Um, that helps. Capital I didn't helps. say that. Yeah, that helps too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Last one. If there was one person you wanted to meet, past or present, who would it be and why? Mm. One person I'd like to meet, past or present. Hmm. Man, that's a great question. I would say. Uh, hmm. I would say like Albert Einstein or something like one of, one of the top inventors, like okay. one of the, one, one of the people who just, you know, was so far above their, you know, m maybe our modern day Elon Musk will say so, somebody like that. Okay. El Elon or Albert. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing How wrong about with you that. though? I'm, I'm curious what your answer is to that. Well, see, I'm the one that asked the questions. <laughs> Fair enough. There, there, one day I'll answer these questions when I'm turned around in that in that area. That's but right. Zach, I appreciate you taking. Oh, I should say, Doctor Zach. P oh, you can just call me Zach. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure, Zach. Thanks for coming on and explaining crypto. I know I've learned quite a bit, and I hope our viewers have learned quite a bit. If you want more information, you know where to find Zach. If you want more information on any of our information, past guests, articles, or our. Uh, 
people of the week, please go to anthonyvspano.com. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you.